morning, Destiny Community Church. Good morning, Destiny Community Church. Can you guys hear me out there? Let's give him some praise in this place. It doesn't matter if we're inside a building. It doesn't matter if we're inside a parking lot. We're going to give him praise. I feel like at this time, we can't just do a little bit of honks on our, on our cars just to give him praise. Come on, give him some praise. Give him praise. Come on, give him praise. And then from this moment forth, if you do feel the need to praise out, you can use your high beams, maybe even your windshield wipers. Feel free to lift your hands up into the air, give him praise. Before we start, I want to get into the word just a little bit. I'm going to read out of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints and also for me that the words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which i am an ambassador in chains that i may declare boldly as i ought to speak you know, I was uh, with my wife watching the news last night, and, you know, we are in a trying time right now. This is not a time that we've ever seen before. Things are just happening right now, left and right, back to back. And I was watching the news. I was seeing the replay of, of the rioting, the looting, the violence. And I was thinking to myself, man, like, I got to turn this thing off because I am just filling my mind right now with the wrong thing. And then I was thinking about the full armor of God. This is a declaration. This is a mandate to us, not a mandate by Governor Newsom or a mandate by our mayor, whoever. This is a mandate by our God. He said, put on the full armor of God. And the one part of it that really stuck out to me was put on the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. This is on your head. This is to protect your mind. This is to protect your mind so that you will attain, achieve that salvation. It says to put on the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. And when I kept on watching these things, I'm on Instagram, I'm on, I'm on YouTube, and I'm hearing all these, this noise. It's just noise. But you know, I slowly started to get sucked into it. I started to be like, yeah, like we got to do this or we got to stand up for that or we got to. And then slowly I started to, I had to detach myself. I have to disconnect from it yeah. because it was changing me. Yeah. I realized that things were being subconsciously, subliminally, by repetition, by whatever you see on, on the screen, it started to affect my mood. It started to affect my behavior. And I was like, this is not me. I was not called to be this. The Lord said he mandated put on the full armor of God and especially the helmet of salvation to protect our minds, protect what we see, protect what we put into ourselves. But because it can change the way we treat other people, it can change the way we see ourselves and it can change our behavior. And I want us to really focus on that today. I love seeing this new type of worship right now this this is great we are still the body of christ we are still the church we are here to worship him doesn't matter if we're in the building doesn't matter if we're out here in the in the parking lot doesn't matter if we're in our homes doesn't matter if we're in the grocery stores with our masks on we still are the church we still are the church we still show love to people we show forgiveness and kindness to people this is jesus christ exemplified so I want to 
just challenge. I want to encourage all of you guys. It's, you know, it's a different feeling because the last couple of weeks we've been doing live stream and the energy, the vibe is different. I'm going to tell you, it's hard to, it's hard to just lift up our praises when the church, and this is how important you guys are too, of the church, because we need you. We need you to come together and worship together it is a different feeling and i want to tell you right now i'm so happy and glad and i'm just so cheerful and and happy that everybody's here right now so if you can join us this morning in worship these are some easy songs that we have done before so you know there's no no need for lyrics we're just going to worship him uh, if you feel the need to lay your hands on someone inside the car with you whatever just let's just worship him let's be in spirit and in truth And let's give him praise. Amen? Amen. It's okay to clap inside your cars too, just letting you know.
praise in this lot. Let's give him praise. Give him praise. to reach he stands 
this for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory Since the building closed, we haven't stopped moving. 
they could have closed down a building, but they'll never stop the church. And you're the church. The Bible says you're the church. And so my, my heart rejoices. This morning is not so much about a sermon. This morning is more about just coming together and being with one another and looking at one another's faces and thanking God that we're all here together. We have faced some very challenging situations for us, but never for God. Our perspective has been adjusted somewhat, if you will. When situations like this hit, we have a choice, do we not? We have a choice of how we look, what our perspective is like concerning a situation. Now, I thank God for all the uh, things that are required during this season. I think that's wisdom. I, I thank God. But there was such a spirit of fear that spread all over. Not only in the world, but in the church. And that's normal. There's nothing wrong with knowing that there's a spirit of fear over there or out there. That's normal. But when fear comes knocking, and it does, it doesn't mean that we have to open the door and invite it to become a residence in us. We do not operate out of fear. We operate with wisdom, but out of faith. And that's what separates the church from the rest. I'm so proud of Destiny Community Church. Those that have kept in contact, and those that have called to see how we're doing. I'm so proud. I'm so proud that you stood in spite of the challenge, in spite of the fear that has tried to come. And we give God all the glory for that. I want to take, I want to take a few minutes, not very long. May not be too comfortable in your car. I've really prayed and, and really sought God even yesterday it was a, a bit of a struggle for me to get the mind of Christ as to what to share. We always want it to be this grandeur thing, and, and rightfully so. We serve a, a grand God. I've, taught, I've, I've struggled to get a title for our sermon or for the next few minutes. So for the next few minutes, I'd like to share just from my heart. And if I had to give this thing a, a title, I would have to entitle it, Don't Do It. Just Don't Do It. In Hebrews, we, we, we see that Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. And it says that when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now it's always interesting when God asks a question, isn't it? Because God knows all things. The reason God asks questions is not so much for him as it is for us. By that, for example... When, when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, and remember when, after uh, they had partaken of that fruit, that Jesus came in the cool of the morning and asked Adam, Adam, where are you? And of course God knew where Adam was. 
The purpose of the question was to make sure Adam knew where he was. That he wasn't where he was supposed to be. And so there's something interesting when God asks you a question. So Jesus said, hey guys, who does the world, who, who do men, what, what are they saying about me? Who do they say that I, the son of God, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, some say you're one of the prophets. And he said to them, okay, so that's what they say who I am. But who do you say that I am? And that's a pretty legitimate question. He's no longer inquiring about what maybe the unbelievers say he is. We all know people walk around saying, well, you know, we all serve the same God, which is so not true. There's only one God. And then he comes to his elect. He comes to his disciples. He comes, if you will, now from the world, he wants to know the opinion of the church. And so I can sense God standing here this morning and saying, you know, through all of this, people have said, where is God? Through all of this, people have said what they've said for years. If there's a God, why is this happening? Why would God let it happen to me? And that's what they're saying about God. But God is approaching us this morning. And he's saying, who do you say I am? It's always been a challenge to me when I hear people talk about God and they call him the big man upstairs. Oh, the big man upstairs. He's, or they say, somebody up there likes me when something good happens. And, and his name is Jesus. The big man upstairs is not his name. His name is Jesus. And so he's saying, who do you say I am? Even now, in the midst of all of this, Who have you said I am? Moses said, Lord, when I go to Pharaoh, who, who, who do I tell him? Who do I tell him sent me? And you tell, geez, uh, uh, God said, you tell them that the I am sent you. That you are, you are what? What do you mean the I am? You tell him I am the great I am. Please hear me. You tell him that you've come to represent me. And that whatever I need to be to you to get him out of the way, that's what I am. And God said whatever you need me to be. In the midst of all of this thing, in the midst of what everybody's saying, in the midst of blatant injustice that has happened lately, in the midst of all of this, who do you say I am? Now obviously God, Jesus was about to do something great. And so he wanted to make sure, he wanted to make sure that the church understood who he was because of what they were about to go through surmounting to the crucifixion. And so he's saying, guys, I'm going to go through a lot. There's a lot that's going to be happening. And so I want to make sure, hear me, I want to make sure, he's saying, that you know who I am. Because once you find out and you get the revelation of who I am, then you find out who you really are. But you won't, get, you won't know who you really are if you don't know who I am. This is why he said to Peter, Simon, uh, 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 he said, 
But who do you say that I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, You're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now this revelation that Peter got was of utmost importance. It was a, a very significant revelation because you see, when you get a revelation of who God really is, it, I mean who he really is, it changes your whole life. When you get a revelation of who Jesus really is and what he's done, it changes your whole life. And so Peter got a revelation and that revelation was so phenomenal, was so phenomenal that Jesus said, Peter, you are the rock, Petra, rock. And he was saying, you are Peter, you are part of this rock that I'm going to build my church on. You're not the one I'm going to build my church on. Many people think that. Well, uh, uh, Jesus said that uh, uh, upon this rock, I'll build my church. No, what Jesus said, you're going to be part of the rock that I'm going to build my church on. Listen, listen, I don't want to confuse you. Listen, he said, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock, and what Jesus was saying, Peter, this revelation that you just got, that you didn't get it from man, but you got it straight from God the Father, yes, on that revelation, I'm going to build my church. Not my buildings. I'm going to build my church. I'm going to raise up my church. That's us. We are the church. And he said, and on this church that I'm building, on this church that I'm raising up, when church attacks hell, and there were many in the church, and I understand it, that were attacked by this and did not attack back. And Jesus was saying, when my church attacks hell, not even hell can stop the church. And I've come to remind you that in Christ, in Christ, I've come to remind you that in Christ, if you get this revelation that Peter got of who God really is in your life, I mean, really, who he really, really is in your life. I submit to you that you are unstoppable. You become an unstoppable force. Unstoppable. Somebody say, I am unstoppable in Christ Jesus. I like the message translation. Are you still with me? I like the message translation. When Jesus arrived in the villages of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, what are people saying about who the Son of Man is? And they replied, some think he's John the baptizer, some Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. And he pressed them. And how about you? Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter said, you're the Christ, the Messiah, you're the Son of the living God. And Jesus came back and said, God bless you, Simon, son of Jonah. You didn't get answer out of books or from other teachers. My father in heaven, God himself, let you in on this one secret of who I am. God himself let you in on the secret of who I really am. And now I'm going to tell you who you are. Now that you know who I really am, I'm going to tell you who you really are. We're not what other people often say we are. Oftentimes people try to label us by our mistakes or by the past. And yes, we might have done that, but just because we did that doesn't mean that that's who we are. 
And so many of us that got hung up on our mistakes, and we've all had them in, in our past. And God is saying, but that's not who you really are. If you get a revelation that I am the Son of God, who has come to die for you on the cross, who has come to be crucified for you and shed my blood for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, that you might get born again, then you'll begin to understand, if you get that revelation of who I am, then you'll begin to understand who you really are and what's your rightful position in Christ Jesus. And that's what he's saying. And he's got to tell them this because of what's up ahead. He wants to make sure that they're going to be strong. He wants to make sure that they're going to stay focused. And folks, for years, for years, he's been telling us, who do you say I am? And for years, he's been asking you, who do you say I am? And we said, why would you ask us that? You always ask why. Because stuff was coming. And he wanted to make sure that you knew who you were. So that when stuff hits, it doesn't change your mind about who you are because it doesn't change him and if he, he's unchangeable and if he's unchangeable then his church should be unchangeable also and the gates of hell and I'm going to tell you who you are who you really are you are Peter a rock and this is the rock on which I will put together my church a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it up and then he went on to say that's not all you this is the word you will have complete and free access to God's kingdom you will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Keys to open and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth. No more barriers between earth and heaven. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. The keys to the kingdom. Once you realize who you are in Christ. Then you can operate in the kings of the, of the kingdom. And you can operate in authority. And whatever you declare on earth. Loose on earth it shall be loosed in heaven. And whatever you declare. And loose in there shall be loosed on the earth. Who do you say I am? So in the next few minutes. I want to tell you. Don't do it. Don't you dare do it. Not as the church of God. Not as representatives of God. Don't do it. Don't do what? Don't do what many have already planned on doing. Don't do what many are longing to do. Don't do what many cannot stop talking about. Don't do it. And what's that, preacher? Don't go back to normal. Don't you dare go back to normal. I'm hearing believers, I'm hearing people say, I can hardly wait till we get back to normal. Why would you want to get back to normal? Maybe God used some of this to put you, push you out of that normal thing that, that the pastor couldn't get you out of, uh, that, and that God said, oh yeah, watch this, and he Push you, push you out of your normal uh, situation because you're the church. And he's not a normal God. If we go back to normal, it would be a grave mistake and God would not be glorified. Because he is not a normal God. Thus we are not a normal church. After all that you've been through through this, what have you learned? After all you've gone through, what have you learned? Now, who do you really say he is? 
Don't go back to thinking the same. Don't go back to speaking the same stuff. Don't go back to those old rotten attitudes. Don't go back to that, that, that living in bitterness and, and unforgiveness. Don't go back to living a boring life in Christ. Don't you dare do it. Just don't do it. We're not assigned to be normal people. You have not been called to go back to normal. And so I submit to you this morning. Is your mind made up? Really? Is your mind made up? Did you miss the coming together with your brothers and sisters? Did you miss it? Then don't go back to missing church the way some have been missing. You've realized and you've learned how precious the fellowship of one another is. When the Bible said do not forsake the fellowship of one another. Look this up. The word forsake means don't quit doing it. Don't quit doing it. That's the literal meaning of it. We've covered up without forsake, but it's a strong word. Some of you have said, oh God, it's so good to see you. Are we going to feel the same way after this is over? Are we going to be a little bit stronger when things come and say, well, I don't feel like going to church. No, no, no. We went through that virus thing and we weren't able uh, to get together in the building. You know what? No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm feeling, I'm going to go fellowship with my brothers and sisters. I'm going to, I'm going to go to that building and worship. I'm going to go and praise. And I'm not coming by myself. If my family doesn't want to come, I'll say, you know what? I'll catch you later. I'm going to church. I'm going to church. I miss the church so much. And how about missing one another? And now we've learned that it really doesn't take much to pick up a telephone and call somebody. Not text. Literally talk to somebody else on the end of that telephone. And some of you, <laughs> some of you have even missed people that you don't really care about that much. You've missed them. And that's not a bad thing. That means that there's still room, your heart is still pliable where God can still work in those situations. I found myself laughing the other day when I was talking to one of our pastors and I said, this is funny. I miss the people so much. Even those that don't agree with me, I miss them too. And I talked to my overseer and I was speaking to him and I said, you know, Bishop, I always hear people say, you know, the sheep need their pastor. And that's true. Of course we know that. But I have learned, I have learned that this pastor needs his sheep. So you must, you must this morning, you must get to the point where you say what you said before. As me in my house, I will serve the Lord. But I'm not, I'm not going to serve him like I used to serve him before this hit. And we all know what that's like. We all know what we're talking about here. No, I'm not going to serve him that way. I'm going to serve him all the way. Because this thing that tried to destroy me, speak to yourself. And say, this thing that tried to destroy me, God turned around for his glory and it matured me. I've survived this. That means I am no longer a baby in Christ. All of this has matured me. It's taught me what fear is capable of doing if I would have allowed it to do. But it's also demonstrated to me how great faith in God is. So rehearse to yourself every day if you have to. Who am I saying God is? Do I understand that once I get the revelation of who he really is, 
I believe it was Peter that Simon Peter, yes, that got knocked off his horse, remember that? And that he looked and he realized who had done it and it was Jesus. And when he got that revelation of Jesus, remember the first thing that came out of Peter's mouth? We preached on this not while ago, not long ago. The first thing that Peter said when he realized that it was Christ in front of him, he said, what can I do? How can I serve you? What shall I do? That's the first thing he said. Let's allow God to give us a fresh revelation of who he is. And then understand who we are. If he's unstoppable, we are unstoppable. And if he's holy, and he is, then we are holy. So don't do it. Don't think like you were thinking before this. If your thinking was not what it should have been. Don't live the way you were living before this. If you were living in the way you shouldn't have been living. And your attitude about the assembling of one another. Don't forsake it. Don't forsake it. Make it a priority in your life. To us, it was a wake-up call. I told everybody, when this thing hit, don't sweat it. It's just a training day. It's a season of training. For what? For when Jesus returns. That we would be ready. That our attitudes, our mindset would be set. I love you, church. I'm so great for you, grateful for you. Let's turn this whole thing around and let's use it for the glory of God. Can you say amen? Amen. Let me take that okay. oh, yeah, I'm sorry. What a word. What a word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, Proverbs 3, 5 says to trust in the Lord and, and don't lean on your own, own understanding. And at this time, we, we, we really need to depend on God and trust God. We, we really need to realize that God has been our provider even though maybe uh, 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 we're not working right now or, or whatever it might be. But, but continue to give, church. Continue to be obedient and tithe. And, and and not only is there going to be a, a a change in your in your spiritual walk, but also in your uh, financial plan. I really believe after this that the 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 windows of heaven are going to be open so wide that that our storehouses are not going to be able to contain. So so it's time to really strategize to see where where are we going to continue to plant seed? Are there other areas to plant seed? But but don't stop being obedient to God. So with that, I wanted to share, you can give online and continue to give online at www.destinycommunitychurch.com forward slash give. You can give through the DCCI app, which you can download through Apple Store or Google Play Store. You can text to give. The instructions are on the church website. You can give by simply dropping off your tithe and offering through the mail slot at the front entrance of the church. And on your way out in an orderly and mannerly fashion, you can also drop off your, your tithe and your offering uh, uh, with the instructions of our faithful ushers that have been preparing for this for, for a few weeks now. And, and we really appreciate uh, as uh, you go out in a, an orderly manner, orderly fashion, God bless you. Stay strong. Who do you say Christ is?